Anya Feldman, first of all, th congratulations on winning the prize. Well, thank you very much. Now, the, the Leibniz Prize is Germany's highest prize for researchers. And for you, it's in recognition of your work at, specifically as a computer scientist. Tell us a little bit about your work. What has been the focus of your research so far? So the focus of my work has been the internet. And in that sense, I'm actually very, very curious to understand how are people using this kind of a artificially generated network where in some sense we know all of the specifications but then on the other hand we don't understand that global thing that we have created over here and so we now have to look back at it and study how is it being used where are some of the bottlenecks inside this kind of network what are the reasons for that so that then we can actually go ahead and think about where can we improve some of these things and then actually go ahead and do it and that's the challenge now, network performance debugging, I understand, is one of the topics that uh, you have been focusing on a great deal. Uh, that sounds like trying to get the Internet to work more efficiently. Is the Internet and other networks, are they not already working quite well? Is there still a lot of work to be done there? Oh, there's a lot of work to be done there because I don't know what your experience has been, but whenever I really, really needed it, it usually didn't work. I had to go through quite a lot of trouble in order to actually make it work for me at that specific moment, which is still the user access. But still, even in the background, we have a lot of problems there. Because in some sense, if you look at the internet, packets aren't charged by the distance that they have to travel. It's like, therefore, we have this kind of weird situation where you may as well actually download data from Tokyo instead of getting it from Berlin, even though you are sitting in Berlin. So there's you a more efficient way the of arranging that. Of course. You've been praised particularly for your ability to successfully bridge the gap between basic research and applied research with respect to the internet. Can you give us a few examples that the layman might appreciate? So one example is that traditionally the configuration of all of the routing devices are being done by hand, by just typing. And of course it's very easy to actually do a mistyping. And one of the things that we did back at at and research in the US was to actually go ahead and figure out, are these configurations consistent, yes or no? And of course we found, because they are being done by typing, that they are not consistent. And by just actually doing this kind of checking and then also later on writing a program to do the automated configuration of it, we actually improved a lot of the configuration, not just at at and but also that software which is in daily use at Deutsche Telekom now. So when we're using the internet today and it's, been, it's working well, we can perhaps have, have you to thank for that. Now you've also described the internet not just as a complex system, but also is as a beast. Uh, when you refer to it as a beast, what exactly do you mean and should we be afraid of the internet? You shouldn't be afraid of the internet. Actually, the internet is a great chance because it enables you to communicate with many, many different people. On the other hand, we should be a little bit concerned about what kind of a data are we actually allowing to get onto the internet. Because one of the things that's very, very difficult is to actually delete data out of the network. And so one should be a little bit careful in terms of those kinds of things. There's of course also the challenge that if you look around, that we want to be able to kind of uh, trace back some of the origin of some of the information that is on the internet and that's an open research challenge because right now we don't know how much truth there is to certain uh, aspects or how much there is just misinformation out there. You've been doing a lot of work with online social networks like Facebook and, and MySpace and when you're doing that you're actually doing very close monitoring of the user activity. Do you ever have concerns that your findings might be used by individuals or organizations in ways that might be considered unethical? Ethical considerations are very, very important whenever you're doing research that involves human behavior. So it's very important to understand that we can only study the overall behavior of users and not look at individual users or anything like that. We have to be very, very careful about that. On the other hand, if we don't understand how users actually use the network, we cannot improve the network. And so it's actually necessary input for us to move forward. Can that information be abused? I don't think that the aggregated information can be abused, the statistics. On the other hand, we need to know where are some of the trends. Is it 
HTTP that is actually dominating the internet, like World Wide Web kind of traffic, or is it peer-to-peer -peer traffic? Because we can only improve it by really focusing on the big chunk of the data. It doesn't help us if we're focusing on a minor percentage that is, in some sense, irrelevant. When you do this kind of work with the online social networks, and many people are concerned that if they are on Facebook or some other platform, that their identity is somehow going to be stolen from them, and that information about them may be used in ways that they are, are not happy with. Um, are you? Do you see any any concerns with that res with respect to the research you're doing? I don't see any specific concern with regard to the research that we are doing because we are really not looking at individuals as such. On the other hand, anybody that is using the network, sh or whether it's online social network usage or something else, should be very careful in protecting their identity. So to choose passwords that are actually safe, to avoid writing passwords down, or to just giving away their identity, or to just kind of uh, make it too simple for somebody else to do it. So if somebody sends you an email which asks you for your password and login, don't answer. That's the worst kind of thing that you can do. So be highly suspicious about any of those kinds of things. And so it's actually those kinds of behaviors which are much more dangerous than any of the other kinds of things that is happening. So protect yourself. That's the best kind of advice that I can give. Okay. Now, of the 10 researchers who've been awarded the Leibniz Prize this year, uh, four are women, six are, are men. And the president of the German Research Foundation, when he announced these awards, he said that women often get overlooked when, when nominations are being made for these kinds of awards. Do you feel that women researchers in general have a tougher time than their male counterparts in the research world in getting recognized? I have to say I've been very, very fortunate that I always had very good mentors that helped me actually move forward, made sure that there were interesting topics to be looked at, kind of helped me, and I've just found all of the interactions extremely pleasant and very useful. And so I think in general there's actually a lot of support, especially for women, to go forward as in the technical area. So I haven't seen that kind of problem for myself personally. On the other hand, I know that in certain domains, there's still problems here. And so there's still things to be moved forward. OK, now here's the big tough question. Your award, the Leibniz Prize, brings two and a half million euros to you to use, I think, over the next seven years for research as you see fit. Uh, do you know what you're going to spend that money on? So I have to say I was very happy to see that kind of money going my way and kind of being able to enhance the work of our group. But I don't think it will change in principle the focus of the work. We will probably use it to actually get more international people to visit us, to kind of uh, get more programmers so that we can actually kind of uh, improve the practicality of the work and kind of show even more how applicable it really is and to just continue on and have fun because that's the most important part of it. <laughs> Very briefly, what do you hope to achieve in the next few years with your research? So we are hoping to actually contribute to the future internet in terms of actually redesigning it, learning from all the mistakes that have been made, being able to have networks that are on the one hand safe, easy to use, self-configuring, and just working whenever we need them. And I think that's the most important part. Anja Feldman, thank you very much. You're welcome.